February 22nd. Welcome back to a Sky Talk for the week of February 22nd through March 1st, 2021. And yay! The Mars Perseverance has landed. It landed safely Thursday the 18th. Here's Mission Control. Uh, jumping in joy when they got the signal back from that remote device that it had landed. It took a couple pictures within minutes. And here was the first one that came back. This is headed in towards the Gerizo Crater. Behind uh, this view is uh, a cliff wall, an edge of a, a canyon um, that leads into this crater that at one time scientists think was filled with water. So um, they're doing their mission. They're, if the Perseverance is going to start moving. I highly recommend um, this website. It's the main Mars website, nasa.gov slash Mars 2020. That was the name of the mission. It launched in 2020. Uh, Mars 2020 brought Perseverance to Mars. So this website has everything you could possibly imagine to learn about the Perseverance rover. So, and, and before we go to the actual stars, I want to show you the lineup of the planets this week. Um, this is on March 2nd. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit to February 19th. So if I move the solar system a little bit, you can kind of see we've got Saturn, Jupiter, Venus, Mercury, and Earth sort of in a, a curve, I guess. These three kind of in a line, uh, and then these two out this way. And if I fast forward just a few days, let's go to the middle of the week, say like the 25th or so. Just watch the planets as they move in their orbit. So here we are just a few days later. And you'll notice that Venus is moving more behind the sun. So it's kind of a lost cause for a few weeks. Don't, don't even look for Venus. It's way too close to the sun. But Mercury is moving out um, and getting a little easier to see. I wouldn't call it easy because the problem is um, this is the nighttime side of the Earth facing us. If you go right on the edge of nighttime and daytime, we often call that sunrise, you might be able to look right along the edge of where the sun's about to come up and actually see these three planets. Definitely not easy. Um, in our nighttime sky, so the nighttime sky is everything out in this direction. Uh, the only one we have is Mars. And if you're a human and you're facing south towards the South Pole on this Earth, you'd be looking kind of to your right to be able to see Mars. And the neat thing is the day that Perseverance landed on Mars, the moon was right below Mars. So let's go take a look at that. We can watch the sunset. And uh, sunset, you'll notice like the time I have right now is 5.03 and it is clearly not dark out. As a matter of fact, the sun doesn't even set until 5.36 this week and it's dark out by about 6.15, 6.30. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Just let time go on here. And let's see what shows up. I know that's the sun setting. I'm going to face a little bit south. So turn a little to the left. Oh, yeah, we've got that gibbous moon. Uh, the moon was half, um, somewhere around the 19th or so. And it's getting bigger every day this week. So that'll be the first noticeable thing in the sky, for sure, the moon. And we're at about 10 to 6, and we've got the brightest star in the sky showing up. And we have Mars. Those are the probably the two first things that'll show up. That's Mars right there. That's Aldebaran, the eye of the bull of Taurus. It's a letter V shape. This is Orion the Hunter. Those are satellites zipping by. There's Procyon, the little dog. Betelgeuse and Sirius make up the what we call the winter triangle, a real nice equilateral triangle. And the winter sky is fantastic for observing. I'm going to pause here at quarter to seven, facing south all month. This is our beautiful view that we're going to have. These two stars, they are the brothers. Castor and Pollux of Gemini the Twins. And on this night, which we're on February 22nd right here, the moon is right in the legs. It's almost like they're playing soccer with the moon tonight. There's Gemini the Twins. Here's the lines of all the constellations. And the drawings of the characters that are envisioned. And Betelgeuse is, uh, Orion the Hunter is front and center right here. Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. It's part of his hunting dog that's leaping up towards his master. 
The little dog is Procyon, those three bright ones that make up that triangle. On the 22nd, I guess if you add the moon, it's a diamond shape. Now, don't forget the moon moves a little bit every night. If I go backwards in time, this is the 22nd. Let's go backwards to the 21st. Look carefully at the moon right now. Well, that was the 21st. Here's where it was on the 20th, right in the horns of Taurus the bull. Here's the 19th. And on the 18th, that half moon, just about half moon, was right underneath Mars. That was kind of neat if you knew that was happening and you went outside and watched it. So if I fast back forward to the 22nd here, we've got a beautiful gibbous moon in Gemini. On the 23rd, it'll head out of Gemini. It's like the other brother's got the ball in his hand now. On the 24th, it's going to be smack dab in the middle of Cancer the Crab. And on the 25th, it's going to be in the mouth of Leo the Lion. So we are kind of heading towards the east a little bit. So let's turn our bodies to the left. And if we face east, we're going to be able to see that the moon is in Leo the Lion. And right here is the Big Dipper. Here's the, the three stars that make up the handle. And here's the saucepan. Last two stars in the saucepan. If you, if you follow them up, it'll lead you to the North Star. So off to the left is due north, which makes sense. There's northeast. And um, keep going towards the east and more towards the north. You can actually spot the North Star. If you know what you're looking for, follow the pointers on the Big Dipper. There's the North Star. If you keep going, you bump into Cassiopeia the Queen, the W. That's an, always a fun one to look for in the winter time. And I'm going to stay hanging out here in the east. I'm going to leave everything on. We're going to fast forward time a little bit. I'm going to take a look at what those planets look like early, early in the morning. So everything's circling around the North Star as usual. The Earth spins on an axis, and that star is directly above the North Pole axis. So all night long, the stars rise in the east, and then they set in the west. And sunrise... Is it at about 5.36? It's no longer near the 7 o'clock hour as we head more towards spring and summer. Um, but we will start noticing the sky lighting up, getting brighter before 5.30. So here we are at 5. And I'm going to stop right here. This will work. I'm going to turn off all these, zoom in just a little bit. So the sun is not completely up yet, but the sky is starting to turn orangish pink. And here it is at 5.47 a.m. on the 26th. You have Jupiter, Mercury, and Saturn. And, and that's what that diagram that we looked at of the entire solar system showed us, that we'd be able to see these three, and actually Mercury as the days go on. Let's look at the 27th. Climbing a little bit higher, here's the 28th, the 29th, and March 1st. Here's March 2nd, March 3rd, March 4th, March 5th. Ooh, on March 4th or 4th and 5th, Jupiter is going to overtake Mercury. Jupiter is going to climb higher than Mercury. Mercury is probably heading back towards the sun. Um, so those are there. They're not super easy to notice, especially if you don't like uh, being outside at 548 in the morning in the winter. But that's where the planets are this month. And uh, we've got a beautiful waxing gibbous moon heading to a full moon on Saturday the 27th. And on Sunday, the 28th, um, Mars is going to be really, really close to that little cluster in Taurus called the Pleiades. So that's another neat thing to look for in the evening sky. So go out with a coat and a hat and gloves and mittens. If you go out to do observing, it's still winter. It's still cold. And look for these beautiful winter constellations. I'll see you next time.